So today we got a brand new futon. My neighbors below aren't gonna like that. <laughs> it's like, a, wait, here's some old futon. And in this episode, I wanted to go over, this is also a futon. There's different kinds of futon. Here's a new futon that just came in. And as you can see in our apartment, we don't have tatami, which is a little bit strange to have a futon because most people that have tatami rooms will have futons but if you don't have a tatami room usually you don't get a futon there's a reason behind that and in this episode i will also talk about that more and more apartments in the, in tokyo don't have futon and i've been living in japan for 26 years and i can't imagine not sleeping on one in fact i have trouble sleeping in beds because i'm so used to being on a futon so there's some benefits to that and i'll, I'll kind of share my information for my experience with you uh, Kanai is over there working, so I'm not sure if she's gonna. She might help us out here. This is our old futon, and what I noticed is that it, it's kind of gotten a little bit of kabi, or how do I say it? It just looks a little bit moldy. I've had this for about 12 years. And the life of a futon is usually less than 10 years. We also need a new carpet, so it's time to go to Ikea. We also had this, like, memory foam thing, and it's just awfully filthy. And I was, I was thinking about it. I said, you know what? It's time to get a new futon. So that, that's what I did. This is a double size as well. I had it in the old apartment. I'm not even sure why we were sleeping on it. I had to take the sheets off of it. And, uh, yeah, that's when we discovered this is not good. One of the things that you definitely need to get when you don't have tatami for a futon is this. There are certain things that um, you definitely need. Something like this here. This is a, a tatami mat. You see this? It kind of will spread out on a floor and you need this because tatami are, uh, it, it, tatami rooms are breathable rooms. It, the, the tatami is like alive. So when you have a cold floor and a hot body on a bed, there'll be condensation, so it'll get wet underneath there. But if you have something like this, not only can you dry it out like this, but you can also uh, really protect the life of the futon. You really need to have carpeting or a mat. You can't have a hardwood floor with the futon. Um, they also have these really nifty... Um, let me see if I can pull this up here. They have these uh, nifty wooden... There it is right here wooden frames that you can also buy and and this is hinoki wood or japanese cedar it smells great to have that in there let me get this out of the way and this is something that you would put the futon on so it, it lets it lets it breathe uh, underneath there get some air underneath uh the one that i ordered it's not coming until later today i think this one was the one that i got here and it's made again from hinoki wood it kind of rolls up so it's easy to put it away and you put the futon on top of that. Again, it, it allows some air underneath there so you don't get condensation to build up, in particular during the winter, which is kind of a mess. And I think that's why we got the kabi or the black mold in the futon to begin with. I didn't do a very good job taking care of it because I used to live in an apartment with a beautiful tatami room. Look at this. I had to give this up when I came here. Again, like most apartments in Tokyo don't have tatami rooms anymore. Mine did. I can't imagine living in Japan without a tatami room. At least that's what I thought until I moved in this apartment. And I still really miss the tatami room. It's just a, like the soul of a Japanese apartment or house is that tatami room. And I just got new tatami. The house smelled so good. It's such a re refreshing smell. So when we moved into here and it didn't have a tatami uh, room, I was kind of upset because I wondered, can we even use the futon? This is a ryokan that I stayed in in Fukushima. You can see the tatami, um, the futons are laid out on top of the tatami. This is the way it, it's done so it doesn't get that condensation underneath the tatami mats. Um, and you can see underneath the tatami, sometimes they have uh, like a memory foam or a soft mat to add more layering to it. But nowadays, and this is the tatami, the uh, futon I want to show you, the one we got, is extra thick I think it was like 13 centimeters thick five layers so I figured we don't really need much of anything and this is gonna be a really comfortable um, sleep it came in a box just like this and uh, let's see what this one is if it's the same 
Yeah, I get the same color. The price for this larger one was um, 15,000 yen or about a hundred and hundred dollars, which is, which is, I guess what you should pay. There it is, the futon, brand new one came in here, uh, folded up like this. The benefits to the futon, you can put your bed away. When you have a bed, a Western style bed, you cannot fold your bed away unless it's one of those uh, Murphy beds that fold into the wall. But for Japanese uh, futon, you can't put it away. And this leaves you with a lot more space, which is a premium when you're in a Japanese, especially Tokyo apartment. Oh, look at this. This is another reason why I bought it from this company because it looks like it, it's a, uh, a really nice small business. And they make these futons. They give, they give you a little brochure. There's the team making the futon. That makes me pretty happy to see them. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the hard work. This is actually, I think this is like the Amazon Essential futon as well, if you can believe it. So, something good there. Um, so that's what we're going to be using. These are much thicker, 13 centimeters. This futon, this is Leo's. I think it's like four centimeters. It's less than that, maybe three. It's really thin, but it also makes it easier and this is something you you definitely need to think about when you get a futon. First, here's the sheet. Some of them are, are uh, the sheets will fit around the futon completely. And then sometimes there'll be a hole in it, which allows it to breathe. Again, you, you want to think about the breathability of the, of your bedding in Japan. But the, the, the lighter and the thinner futon have a benefit. The benefit is that they're easier to move and they're easier to put outside. And when it's a sunny day like it is today, you want to put your futon outside and breathe to dry it out. You'll have one of these. You can get these at the 100 yen shop. They're called uh, clams. And Nihongo de Nante, Futon basami. Futon basami. Yeah. You, you'll get these are like 100 yen or what is that, 85 cents. And you can clip these onto the balcony. You'll see people who do this uh, all around Japan. It keeps, it also freshens your bedding, it freshens your uh, futon, and it's nice in the winter, you can bring it back in, and the solar heat has warmed it up a little bit as well. But the lighter the futon, the less space it takes up. These, I don't think you can even really fold it very, very well, but it's going to be a pretty comfortable sleep, I think. And, uh, you know, I, ever since I started sleeping in a futon, I realized that I feel better. The softer beds just made me too comfortable and I wasn't as, uh, I don't know, limber. But uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely, it, it's something that's in the West where people are getting futons and they come in these bed frames and people in Japan sleep on the floor. I've never fell in, fall out of, I've never fallen out of bed in Japan because I basically sleep on the floor, which means you have to get up. That's good for the body as well to be able to, to stand up like that instead of falling out of bed it's it's just too comfortable from discomfort comes strength maybe do they ship international also hi john and family that von Jick, hey good day um i don't know i guess you're gonna have to to go on to amazon.co.jp uh, i'll put a link in the description if you're interested to what the same one that we got they had three different styles i think and I guess I can open up that brochure. They had three different styles, three different, um, like, uh, 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 depths. And I, I got the thickest one because it, it was a little bit more expensive, but it also looked like, why not? You know, it's like, do you get a, a 55 inch TV or 75 inch TV or an 88 inch TV? No, you go for the 88, don't you? Oh, wait, you're supposed to look at the size of the room, etc. Yeah, I know. That's not something that I do. I just went for the 65. I said, can I get a 55 or 65 inch? I'm just going to get the 65 inch. All right, let's take a look at this literature. Thank you, Bradshaw Studio. Oh, this is nice. So they, they kind of uh, go over. This is the one from Amazon. So it's, it's, a, it's a small business in Tochigi which is a prefecture estate uh, near Tokyo. 
and you can see them uh, making it. There's some information on how to sleep better. I thought that that was interesting. I just passed that. Like, don't smoke tobacco right before you go to bed. It says here. That's interesting. I don't smoke, so that's not an issue. I sleep pretty good. They even have a Facebook page. Oh, here are the, the three kinds of uh, baton. Here. So there's the, uh, sh uh, sh is it shiki futon, right? Yeah, shiki futon is the... The bottom. Yeah, yeah. So this is the, the uh, shiki futon. This is the bottom. And then there's the kake futon, which is the top. The kake futon is this one here. So there's two kinds of futon. That's another thing you have to consider. This is the kake futon, which is a comforter, basically, in English. And this is a really thick one. I think... Uh, uh, we keep it for in the winter. And then when the summer comes in, we, we have one of these bags that takes the air out of it and it, it all the down feathers just compress and you can put it and store it in the closet and, and we bring it out in December. It's that warm. Um, we have uh, just a typical, like it almost looks like a towel, but it's a summer blanket in Japan. We take those out around the middle of May. And then there's this like tweener period where we have these um, uh, blankets. I don't know if, if I have it here. We have these blankets here, like a light comforter. Right now we're doing it, or, or something like this, a uh, microfiber blanket. You can get them at a Costco pretty cheap. So we have that in like May as a tweener, so like a, in between. We might need a, I might get another memory foam. It just depends, but this is well past its prime. You don't think about it, you know, you're bedding too often. Some good questions here. Um, if you have a small apartment, the futon actually can double as a sofa. You put it up against the bed. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to sit on my friend's sofa if I came over his house. And this is my bed. This is also my sofa. A little weird. But again, one of the things with um, Westerners in their apartments, a lot of younger people would get that futon frame that would, would prop up like this. And you could be able to sit down like a, make your bed into like a sofa, which is... You know, it's really good for space saving. Kind of gross. I'm not sure I want to sleep on someone's bed, if, especially if they're doing, you know, the deed on it or whatever. I'm not sure. I probably just want to sit on the floor. But, you know, if you don't take off your shoes, you might be left with nowhere to sit. I've been here for 26 years. I've been here for a very long time. I don't know. I remember watching Friends and Seinfeld episodes and you see like Chandler put his shoes on the sofa and you can see uh, all of us here in Japan, like cringing, like, what What are you doing? Or, or um, when Jerry had his, his shoes on and he was laying in his bed, it's like, are you kidding me? Just kind of was a little bit too much for, for me after living here for so long. Like, I don't know why. The, the first thing you should do when you come into your house is take off your shoes. You've been in the restroom, you've been on the, in the subway, you've been you know, all over the place inside the Walmart. You really want to bring that into your carpeting? I don't, I never understood. I'm looking here. I just want to say thank you to Samantha. She made this beautiful um, drawing and we've, we've cherished it since Leo was born as one of the gifts and uh, uh, we really love it. Yeah, so this is the bedroom. It's not very big. Um, one of the other things I'm doing is putting Leo, who's our, our uh, almost three-year-old son, he's going to be sleeping in his own room from now on, uh, which is a tent. <laughs> so we may, we're gonna put the, I'm going to put his futon in this tent that looks like a dinosaur. And he already put most of his friends in there. He's got the Totoro and Owl um, from Coco, was it Coco Melon? I don't know, one of the things. you got all these dolls up here. All right, I'll take some questions about futon. Uh, if you're coming to Japan, if you're thinking of moving to Japan, this is also something you should think about. If you're in, coming to Tokyo, the, you're probably not going to have a, a tatami room in your house anymore. But if you're living out in like Shizuoka, Niigata, out in the countryside, there's a high likelihood that you will have a tatami room because it's more traditional. It just depends on the older apartments. The reason why is tatami is... Um, more and more, the companies that make tatami are going out of business because the demand for them is lower because younger people don't want to take care of tatami, which requires being taken care of. And they need to be replaced like sometime between six and 10 years. You have to put in new tatami and there's extra cost. 
if you have wooden floors like we do here or fake wood i i think it's a lot cheaper and a lot less maintenance but you miss you lose the soul of the room and i don't like the fact that japan is changing into this um tatami less world you got to keep the the tatami makers in business out there there's some good ones kumamoto down there in, in uh kyushu there's a lot of good uh and and totori i know a, a, a tatami maker in totori um how about pillows any recommendations all right, Brian, I'm actually working on a pillow episode. It sounds like a little weird, but um, pillows in Japan. Yeah, you know, the place that I go to buy the pillows is probably Nitori. Nitori. They usually have about seven or eight different types of pillows, but I, there's, there's a hotel style pillow. And I kind of like that one. I prefer uh, feather pillows. But Kanai, you don't like feather pillows, right? Yeah, yeah what kind of do you like? You don't like feathers. Yeah. My dad likes the beads. Oh, those are the worst. Do you mean 100% bead? Yeah, my dad, my... You, know, you mean like Mugi? It used to be Mugi, right? No, my dad using the plastic beads. Yeah, there's... Well, before plastic beads, they didn't have that in the, yeah, you know... Soba, early yeah. Showa era, they had Mugi, right? It was Mugi inside. Yeah, the soba. Or Soba, right. Yeah. So they used to be, all right, the traditional Japanese pillows, and you still get them, it's just like a bag of barley. It's like a bag of oatmeal. No, it's 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 a bag of hard barley. I, I have no idea. I, I'm sure some of you who visited Japan have gone like, what the heck is this? It's a bag of soba. Um, you, you, it's, it's, it's. I don't know, it's, it's so heavy and it's so hard. I never understood. Of course, it'll conform to your head. I guess it's good for you. But here's the thing. They have these pillows that that also um, uh, have the mugi or the barley or the plastic beads on the bottom of it. And so when you, when you, if you're sleeping on your stomach, you know, and you put, I like to put my hands under my pillow sometimes and caress my pillow. You start playing with those darn beads right? And there's plastic beads inside of them. I, I can't, it, it irritates me and then I can't fall asleep. That's just me. I prefer like a, a nice hotel f fluffy big pillow. <laughs> That's what I have here. It's in Leo's tent. He took it. But you, Nitori is one of the best places to get uh, sheets and bedding and it's pretty affordable. N-I-T-O-R-I. They have one in Shibuya. They've got a They've got the Nitori all over the countryside. Some massive Nitori. You can buy home furnishings in, stair, in, in there. A lot of this stuff is not made in Japan, though, which is, is disappointing. A lot of it is made uh, you, you were the same place I Ikea or Ikea, as we say in Japan, makes your stuff. But uh, Amazon, believe it or not, Amazon might be one of the better places to buy it because you can check the origin of your products there. And I, when it comes to bedding, I always get it made in Japan. I don't know, because I always think the bedroom is... It's like a sacred place. You're spending a third of your day there sleeping or sometimes a quarter of your day if you're editing a lot. But, um, you know, you should replace your futon um, every seven to ten years. All right. I had mine for over ten years, so it was time for it to be replaced, which is what we got today from a, a company off of Amazon that looks like it's it's uh, some happy people. And just in Tochigi, so, you know. When you when you are buying a futon in Japan, try to make sure it's a futon made here in Japan. Um, I I got my last one that I'm I'm we're recycling. You have to get throwing away a futon in Japan isn't like putting it out to the curb. Well, we do that, but you have to get stickers, which is paying a tax. And I think uh, it was 200 yen, just uh, like 180 yen. We we have to put it out on uh, on a day in 10 days from now, out on the curb before 8 a.m. And then they'll pick it up. Ikuradake, the tickets for the recycling for the futon. 200 yen? Yeah. For the it's big a, futon? Yeah, it's A-ken. Oh, the A-sticker? Yeah, A-sticker, 200 yen. We can buy at the convenience store. Yeah, you get them at the convenience store, 200 yen. We put the sticker on the futon and take it out to the curb. And then they come and pick it up around 8 a.m. They're really fast. Not a lot of... It's called sodai gomi, which is the large tr stuff you cannot put in the burnable trash. 
which would be a futon. Um, I, we threw out a desk at the beginning of the year, and I think that was about 800 yen. And if you throw out a, a TV or something, you're probably going to have to pay about 12 to 2,000 yen, maybe more. Um, I think TVs, though, you might have to return it to the maker. You have to call LG or Sony, and the, you'll have to send it to them, or they'll have to come and pick it up. Sometimes that's the recycling process for TVs and things like this. Don't forget to be... DD, that's... that's um, the final thing, the maintenance and the care, as I showed you, there was the uh, the clip that you need. Thanks for that. The clip that you need for the futon is right here. This is something, we'll put it on the balcony. And then you can also, they, they, they have these, uh, what do you call them? The pom pom, the things for the futon. A uh, futon tataki. A uh, futon tataki, yeah. So you have the futon tataki and you go outside and you see the old ladies, particular like around 7 a.m. and they're going, they're just bang. Banging the futon and getting the dust out of it. That, that, where do you think those old ladies in Japan get their power from? It's from banging the futons. I swear they are just whacking out of those things. And there's dust. Even if there's no dust in there, they find dust. In fact, if you whack something strong enough, it, it turns to dust. So I think maybe those futons, they only last 10 years. They probably could last 20. Maybe they're just turning it to dust. You didn't think about that. Thanks for bringing that up. And Carrie writes in here, plus free anger management. That's very true. That's very true. All right, so uh, there you go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I think it's interesting um, when you are coming to Japan. If you do if you do come here, you, you definitely have to stay in a yokan and in a tatami room. Like, I've stayed in so many of them. Uh, over the course, you can see them on on my Instagram page here. I, I whenever I stay in one, I'll take a picture of it. This is one at uh, um, the onsen up in Akita, Nyuto Onsen. It was really cold. Um, when I went to dinner, they pushed the table to the side and then they put the futon right in the middle there. So it it it's a way to save space to use futon in the tatami room. This is one that I stayed at. At um, where was this one? Oh, this was in uh, Omihachiman in um, uh, Shiga Prefecture. Uh, they put the futon out like this, and I, I had to put it away. You can see there's a, there's a mattress underneath the futon to give it a little bit of more softness to it. And I think it was one of those Mugi uh, pillows with the beads in it, which drive, drives me crazy. But, uh, you know, it's the soul of the room. And when you have a, um, a futon, it's kind of cool. You, f you, you really feel like you're in Japan when you have that. And... Uh, I think I hope that you all, you know, stay in a hotel like place that allows you to have a futon. Um, they're really reasonable if you buy them. Oh, the um, the one of the things that you have to the reason why you're, you're banging them out and making sure that the moisture gets out is because there's also uh, not just kabi, which is mold. But what do you call the, the little bugs in there? Can I hmm? the little mushy Dan, dani. the dani? So dani can be a problem usually for tatami. But if you have the futon on the tatami and it's getting condensation underneath there, it's starting to rot, the dani will come and the dani are uh, uh, like little mites. Futon vacuum, right? Yeah, there's a futon, futon vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Bed bugs. Yeah. More or less, I think dani are like a Japanese bed bug. It's different than the ones in Paris. Those yeah. things are indestructible. They don't bite, usually. They don't bite? But yeah, it, it makes uh, allergic. Ah, uh, yeah. So... We have to put outside. Yeah. Can every day and dry. Out every day. Yeah. You okay. know we never do that. Yeah, we really do it. <laughs> we better. So every day. I think every... it's like once a month. Yeah, once a month. No, once a week. We do. We have to do. Well, we have to do that. We had to. Now we're, that's why we're throwing this away. Yeah. We're so busy, you forget to to put it out. Uh, we have a we we used to put out the wash like uh, we would wash the clothes in Japan. Dryers are a novelty here, so you have a washing machine, but you'd never really have a dryer in Japan. Same with washing machines, dishwashing machines. You don't really have dishwashing machines in Japan. You have to wash your dishes by hand. There's the same, you know, a home appliance that just doesn't fit in the house. But we have uh, shout out to Paolo because he we we went to his place and he, we saw his washing machine. We're like, that's really nice. He goes, yeah, it's a washer dryer. I'm like, cool. So we ended up getting the same one as him. Darn influencers. And it it washes and it also dries. So we don't have to dry this stuff. So it made us lazier. 
So we end up, uh, um, but we, in the winter, in the summer, we always uh, try to dry this stuff outside because it saves on energy costs. But because it dries and when you have a, a kid, you have a lot less free time to hang stuff. So anything that can save time is, is valuable, but you know, we're trying uh, very much to be uh, eco-friendly as well. You have to think about that a little bit, every, step by step. Yeah, call it, can a can it dry a futon? No, that dryer is too small. Actually, there are places like laundromats, you can take the futon to wash, Janai. Huh? Sentaki dekiru de shou. Yeah, can it go inside? Yeah, the... washable. It's washable, yeah, but you need a big washable. washing machine. Yeah, we have laundry, coin laundry um, here. Coin laundry? Yeah. Oh, yeah, across down the street. It's, yeah. They have a bigger side laundry machine for futon. Right. Yeah, yeah. You've done that before? I haven't, but my sister did. Oh. Is that more expensive? I don't know. How much? 300 yen or 500 yen. And we've never done it for Leo's futon. Does he know that? But we bring it the futon to the cleaning. Oh, to the dry cleaning? Dry cleaning. I bring the oh. cleaning shops. How much is that? Especially the shiki futon. That's got to be... Oh, right. The comforter. Yeah. But the top, the bottom one is the shiki futon. The kake, oh, yeah, futon, kake is futon is the top I one. The comforter it. is called the kake futon. And the shiki futon is the bottom part of the mattress. And the mattress part you can take to dry cleaner, but the shiki, the kake futon you can't. Dr this is we can't put it in the washing machine. It's down, so we have to get it dry cleaned. <laughs> yeah. You know that, right? We can bring a cleaning shop too. Yeah, we take it to the cleaning <laughs> shop. All right, this is good information. Anything else should the people know about futons? Since you're a master, I'm I'm not the master, but. I like futon because it's easier to put away, then we can make more space. Yeah, but we don't often put it away. Yeah, so but my, my dad is lazy. has a Japanese tatami room. Yeah. So he brings futon to his closet, oshire closet, every yeah. day. He does? Yeah, I, I was doing it every day. Why? How come we don't do that? I don't know, we don't have a space for Oshide because we don't have a tatami room. Oh, right. Oh, right. Tatami this isn't room. a tatami room. This so is not tatami room. This, we have a very small closet. Right. So we can bring this futon to put away. So it's unusual to have a futon in, without a tatami room. Right? Like people would have beds in this yeah. kind of a space. Right? Yeah. So that's another thing. The, the, the closets for tatami rooms, I'm not going to show that because all our stuff's in there. But the, this closet's not big enough to fit the, tata, the beds. So a uh, tatami room will have a closet that's much, much bigger that you can fit the futon underneath there and put it away. And then you're left with this really beautiful, spacious room that you can, you know, do your yoga or whatever in. Yeah, yeah. yeah but this <laughs> closet isn't even, is, isn't even big enough for our clothes, actually. It's, I think it's time to move. So we have to keep the futon out, and that's not ideal. Um, so that's another thing you should consider when you are living in a, in a Japanese-style uh, apartment. Not all of them have the tatami room, or, and if they don't, then it's probably going to be hard for uh, to put the futon away at the end of the day. So that's why we leave it out. Oh, so we're not lazy. We're just victim of circumstances. I like that. I hope we are not lazy, but we're doing the best. Yeah. <laughs> <So busy. laughs> I'm doing my best. It's not easy because you have to put, you, you should put the futon away, but when you don't have a closet space for it. But look, my heart wants the futon. It's not her. She, you'd want a bed, right? Yeah, I want a bed. You want a bed? Yeah. yeah that's not going to happen. This is I Japan. Want too. That, yeah, but if we have a tatami room, I want the futon, but we don't have it, so the bed is better. But we live in Japan. We must have futon. There's no choice. I mean... <laughs> Like, I can't imagine living here and not having a futon. Yeah, I hope we can get the tatami room next time. Yeah. So, Leo, <laughs> so, but in Japan, all the family will sleep in the same room. So, it's nice to have futon instead of bed. When we go to the hotel, it's actually hard because we have beds in the hotel. And Leo is still young where he could fall out of the bed. So, he has to sleep in the middle. So I, I would much prefer to stay in a yokan, which is on the floor. If you have little kids, that's way, way better. 
but that's the Japanese style. Every all the families line up like five yeah. futons, which if you're staying at your in laws' place, that would be slightly uncomfortable to have to sleep next to your mother in law. I was sleeping with my dad and mom until high school. Yeah. But、really? We have a Japanese school, Japanese tatami room. Don't you、It's、want your、normal. own room? I have an own room, but I didn't sleep there because this is traditional Japanese way to sleep together with family. Yeah, but your dad snores. <laughs> He has a ibiki、yeah. problem. Yeah, but so how did you sleep? How? I can sleep. We used to it. <laughs> It's fun. Wow, this is news to me. <laughs> All right. John, that's not logical. What? <laughs> Nothing really. I think it's a big difference with Japan、yeah. and Asia and America. I love hearing your wife talk. Writes in、uh, Sierra in、uh, Tokyo. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> it's soothing. It's so kind of you to let us into your bedrooms. Hey, Taro Tobacco, you can't stay. You're here just as long as、uh, <laughs> we let you in Bradshaw Studio.、Uh, Say, put ninety nine cents, but got a red sticker according to my little thing. So you're you're here forever. Yes,、yeah, snoring could be a problem. So if your in laws snore, you might not have a choice in Japanese. I think when Peter goes to his in laws' place, he has to sleep in sleep in his tummy room with everybody as well. He kind of likes the change of pace. Perhaps we'll have to ask him about that. But、uh, there are sofas that you can transform into beds, so John can sleep in the living room. Actually, this sofa does trans. Sofa is a pretty nice bed,、um, but it's it's kind of a mess right now. But it's large enough. If I take the back cushions off, you can sleep there.、Um, my, my friend Tom, I think, had to sleep on that sofa, and he didn't have、you、too much. Yes, sometimes. I do. I sleep here sometimes if、uh, everybody is sick or if I'm sick. I have to sleep out here, and you know, so we don't get all sick or, or COVID or whatever. That we had to do some separation. But if you're living together, does it really matter? We're all gonna get it. So. Yeah. Anything else about、uh, futon we should know? Like, why is the thicker one better? You wanted this one. It's, it looks good. It looks good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Leo's sleeping in there. Yeah. He yeah. said, anyways, he wants to try. Yeah. All right, everybody. That's <laughs> all we have. Thank you. Kai, you can go back to work. Thank you. And thank you all of you for watching. Um, if you have any questions about futon or Japanese home furnishings or ideas for an episode, leave it down in the comments below. I appreciate、uh, the feedback.、Um, I'm always learning about this too. I love to go to a futon maker and see how they make it. Maybe even these people here because they look really happy.、Uh, I want to know what's inside of the futon. It's not springs, but this is the traditional way to make it. And a lot of them are making it with the same ingredients. Usually, it's cotton or、um, uh, sometimes it's straw. So some of the really traditional futon makers make it the way that they've been making it for hundreds of years, and that's kind of cool. I'd like to learn more about the history of bedding in Japan and tatami rooms, and maybe if you guys want it, let me know in the comments, and、uh, I'll be inspired to make that episode because that's the soul of a Japanese room, right? Iken, thanks for the insights, my friends. Oh wait, I, I just went by here.、Um, My friend's mom had a wonderful futon. They were like clouds. I know. I'm hoping that the sticker one, and I splurged a little bit.、Um, thanks for the super chats, guys. That's <laughs> I was able to splurge a little bit. So I got the ones that were about four、um, thousand yen more expensive because I figured they might last longer, and they had an extra layer, which is always good. When you think about a like a cake, an extra layer is is good. Yeah. Mama, Dada, Leo. Fireworks. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you in the next、uh, episode, perhaps tomorrow. Matane.、Um,